Uh, the other day, I was driving in my car, I was listening to the radio, uh, 97.1 Hank FM. Anyone knows what that is? Country music. I don't even know how many of you guys listen to the radio when you're in the car. You probably just hook up to the ox. You listen to the radio? That's good. Um, but I was listening to the radio, and the radio host or DJ or whatever you call them came on, and they, asked, they had like a question of the day. They had a question, and the question was, would you give up a year of your life for $500,000? <laughs> they, they extended it and they, they said, would you give up two years of your life for a million dollars? I don't know about your answer. Mine, pretty easily, I could answer no. I would not do that. There was one, one person that called in and was like, I don't know if I'd do a whole year, but I'd probably give up half my life for like $250,000. I think that's kind of crazy. I don't know where you're at with that. But it really got me thinking, and it, it was a really interesting question. But it got me thinking what people would be willing to get up for something that they want or something that they value. So if someone wants or values money enough, then for that, that might be a legitimate question. They would be willing to give up some of their life for money. But if we really want or value something, then we're probably willing to give up something in order to get it. So my question as we start that I want you to think about is what are you willing to give up in order to get something that you really want or value. You can take that, that question a lot of different ways. You can, you can turn it and apply it to a lot of different things. But my question for tonight, and what's really going to set up our conversation, is what would you be willing to give up in order to gain a closer and deeper relationship with God? Is there something in your life that you might be willing to give up in order to, to gain a more intimate relationship with God? Tonight, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about giving something up, getting rid of something. Uh, and it's going to be more focused on maybe something that you do or something that you spend time with or, or something that you focus on. But if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, we've been in this uh, bridge series. It's all about closing the gap between you and God. So bridging the gap between you and God, growing closer into the person God wants us to be while also growing closer in our relationship with God. The first week, we talked about memorizing scripture. Last week, if you're here, we talked about solitude. And tonight, the focus is going to be on fasting. Before we get into fasting and all the details of it, I'll give a, a definition of fasting and what that looks like for us. But I want to give a, a different definition as we start. I want to give a definition of discipline. Okay, I heard this definition. It would have been over a year from now, but this definition has, has just stuck with me. It's framed a lot of what I do and, and how I've looked and approached different things in my life since I heard the definition I think it's really good. Here's the definition that I want us to, to think about, is that discipline is giving up the good and the better for the best. Discipline is giving up the good and the better for the best. And so the question that we're really going to focus on tonight, is there something good or better in your life that you could give up in order to get the best? Is there something in our life that we can discipline ourselves from and give up in order to gain more of something that's more important. And that's where we're going tonight. So I want to get right into it. Our, our text for tonight is Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18. Like always, it's in your Bible app. If you want to follow along, it's going to be up on the screens. But here's the text, Matthew 6, 16 to 18. It says, And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. So that's our text for tonight. But before we really get into what fasting is and what that looks like for us and how we can apply that to our life, there's a couple things that I want to point out from this text. Okay, so the first is that it says when. Okay, it says, but when you fast. And this is something that, that we see throughout Scripture when, it, when Scripture talks about fasting. It, it was an expectation that people were fasting, that followers of, of Jesus were fasting. It's not necessarily a, a command or something that we have to do, but it was simply a, an expectation that people that wanted to grow closer to God, this is something that they would do. So it was an expectation that people were fasting. The second is the heart posture that comes with this. So what, what these verses is getting at, this was uh, geared towards the Pharisees, the religious elites, who used fasting 
and use some of the other spiritual disciplines as a way to, to kind of impress people or look good or, or get uh, earthly recognition and rewards. And so the, the main point of this text is saying that our heart has to be in the right place when we do spiritual disciplines or, or when we practice fasting. We have to make sure that our number one purpose and goal and the meaning behind fasting, behind really any spiritual discipline, is that we want to grow closer to God. We, we want to be obedient to him and grow in that relationship. It, it can't be because we want to look good or we want to impress people or, or we want to check things off the boxes uh, or, or present ourselves in a certain way. We have to make sure that our heart is in the right spot. And the last thing that I really want to point out before we get into it is that fasting and really all the spiritual disciplines, similar to what I just said, it's between you and God. Not anyone else, nothing else. It, it shouldn't be about anything except to grow your relationship with God. This, this text for tonight, but if you would go a little bit uh, before this text, Jesus talks about giving, he talks about prayer, and now he talks about fasting. And all three of these things, he, he basically has the same approach and the same purpose for it because the Pharisees were doing the same thing with all of them. The, the point and the purpose was that this needs to be between you and God. It's not about what other people see or what other people think or trying to impress people. It's about you and God. It's about growing in your relationship with him when you put these things into practice. Spiritual disciplines are a way that we can bridge the gap between us and God, but we always need to make sure that our heart is in the right place when we do these things. And so now, fasting. Why fasting? What is fasting? What does that look like? I got two points for tonight. The first is that fasting fixes our focus. Okay, fasting fixes our focus. This is really at the core of what fasting is. We have to understand this, uh, or really it doesn't matter anything else that I say, but fasting fixes our focus. Here, here's, I have a, a definition that I want to give us of fasting to frame the rest of our conversation. We'll throw it up on the screen. Fasting is denying yourself something to better focus on God. Okay, fasting is denying yourself something to better focus on God. And this wasn't really my definition. I stole it from uh, the message translation. Okay, so the message translation reads from the text that we previously read. It says, when you practice some appetite-denying discipline to better concentrate on God. So the, NI, or the NLT version that we read, all the NLT said is when you fast. This, it, it kind of explains it for us. When you practice some appetite-denying discipline to better concentrate on God. Fasting is when we deny ourselves something to better focus on God. It's when we deny ourselves a, a physical thing in order to focus more on spiritual things. And before I, I go any further, really get any deeper into this message, I want to be uh, clear about something. Tonight, we're not talking about fasting from food. Okay, Traditionally, fasting is fasting from food, but for our context, for what we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to be talking about fasting from something else. But the reason that we're talking about fasting and the reason that I'm going to challenge us to fast from something is because fasting can help fix our focus. It can help us focus more on God by giving up something that doesn't matter as much. Traditionally, when, when people fasted from food, the purpose was to focus more on God. Okay, so if you were fasting from food, if you were skipping a meal or, or you were going an extended period of time without eating, the purpose was to focus more on God. And so if you're skipping a meal during that meal, the what you were supposed to do was pray and, and spend that time with God. Throughout the day, if you got hungry, the, the hunger pain that you would feel is supposed to point you to God and, and make you remember uh, to focus on God and spend time with him in prayer. That, that's the purpose of fasting is to create room and space for us to, to spend time, more time with God. Quick story. A couple of years ago, I, I was practicing fasting. And when I was doing this, it, it was food for this particular uh, season. And I was doing it with a buddy. We were doing it together. And, and all we were doing was one meal a week. Okay. So it was like a, a Wednesday lunch. We said, we're, we're going to fast from lunch on Wednesdays. And during that time, we're, we're really going to use that to, to pray over this certain area or this certain thing uh, in our life. But I, I, I didn't approach this the best way. Okay. If I'm being honest. So yes, I, I fasted from lunch. I didn't eat lunch on those Wednesdays, but all of a sudden I have this like hour of extra time in my day. Okay, I didn't have to go eat or, or go find food. And so all of a sudden I had extra time to do homework. Okay, I had extra time to, to work out. I had extra time to spend time with friends. Sometimes, it's gonna sound stupid, but sometimes I would actually go to the cafeteria with my friends and, and sit with them. I just wouldn't eat anything. But I, I had it all wrong. Okay, I, I went about it 
the wrong way. That the point, I was missing the point. Okay, I was missing the mark with what this is, and I need us to understand this. Fasting is, is more than just giving something up. Okay, it's more than just saying no. It's more than just refusing something or, or removing something for a period of time. The point of fasting is to focus more on God. And so, yes, we, we give something up. We say no to something. But the main purpose that we have to make sure that we do is, is fill God in that time. Okay, so when we give something up, we have to make sure that God gets that time. Nothing else, we don't spend it in any other way. And so if you choose to, let's say, fast from TV, you, you watch TV a lot, you wanna give that up. Well, in that time when you would normally watch TV, you don't fill that with social media or YouTube or, or doing something else. That time that you would use to watch TV is now time that's devoted to God. It's more than just giving something up. We need to make sure that God gets that time that we're making available. Fasting fixes our focus because when we fast, we're giving up something less important to focus on something that's more important. Here's the second thing that I want us to understand from fasting is that fasting frames our freedom. Okay, fasting frames our freedom. Here's what I mean by this. And again, I wanna be very clear about this. Fasting is not when we stop or eliminate something sinful from our life. Okay, fasting is not when we stop or, or remove something sinful from our life. We're, we're gonna get into that a little bit next week when Matt teaches, but fasting is, is when we actually give up something that could, could be good, okay? Traditionally, fasting is from food. Food is a, a good, necessary thing that we need to live, right? But they're fasting from it. They're eliminating it. They're getting rid of it for a certain period because the purpose is to create more space for God, I wanna go back to the, the definition of discipline that I shared at the very beginning. Discipline means giving up the good and the better for the best. So fasting is all about giving up something good, something that, that could be good or even necessary in our life in order to create the room, discipline ourselves to grow more in our relationship with God. And when I talk about fasting from, or fasting frames our freedom, what I mean by that is that in Christ, we have freedom. Because of the work that Jesus did on the cross, we don't have to follow all these laws and regulations and rules. We have freedom. Christ, he, he sets us free from, from all of that, all the, all the rules, all the laws, all the regulations, and it is through Jesus that we have a right relationship with God. We have freedom because of what Jesus did on the cross, but just because we have freedom does not mean that, that we should just go and do every single thing that we want to or satisfy every craving and desire that we have. Check out these words from, from 1 Corinthians 6.12. <clears throat> It says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. See, the thing is, and what Paul is getting at here is we have the freedom and the right to do certain things, right? We have the, the freedom to eat certain things, to, to watch certain things, to spend our, our time in different ways. But just because we can doesn't mean that we should. Just because we have the freedom to do these things doesn't mean that all the things that we could be spending our time with and doing, it doesn't mean that those things are gonna be good for us or beneficial or help us. He's, he, I love the way that, that Paul ends that verse. He, he gives us a warning. He says, don't, don't allow your freedom to enslave you or don't, don't become enslaved or mastered by anything. That's something that you're gonna talk a little bit about in your small groups, what that looks like and how to make sure that you avoid that. But when I think about this idea of, of discipline and and uh, not satisfying every craving or desire that you have, being willing to say no. I, I think about a guy named Elliot Fisher. Okay, Elliot is, uh, he's in the freshman small group, one of the freshman boys. And Elliot is, in, in full transparency, probably the most disciplined freshman that I've ever met in my entire life. Okay, quite possibly Elliot is the most disciplined freshman in the entire country. Okay, I, I, seriously, I mean that. I don't think he's ever eaten the small group snack that we brought because it's always just junk food. But I talked to him a little bit about it. And Elliot, he's so disciplined in the way that he goes about his life. He sent us last week a typical schedule of what his day looks like. And he's waking up at 4.50 a.m. almost every day. And he's got this routine and schedule. The things that he says yes to, the things that he says no to, they're always thought out. They're always um, purposeful. He, he, I asked him a little bit about why he's so disciplined. He said that he, he feels like he's just chasing something bigger and better. So that there's certain things in his life that he doesn't need, he doesn't need to do, he doesn't need to spend his time with, he doesn't need to eat certain foods because he, he wants to, to chase something bigger and better. He wants to have a healthier life. He wants to influence his family and his friends to do the same. 
he's just able to live with, without some of the things that, that most of us feel like we might even need. And when we, when we fast, we learn how to discipline ourselves and say no. Think about this. How, how scary and dangerous would it be in our life if we said yes to every single craving and desire that we had? What would your life look like if you said yes to, to every single craving and desire, every single thing that you wanted to do, every single urge that you had? Imagine what your life would look like if you trained yourself to just say yes to all of those things. And the hard part, the scary part, is that I think a lot of us do train ourselves to say yes to all of those cravings and desires. We, we might not even realize it. But that's the beauty of fasting, because it is through fasting that we learn discipline. We learn how to say no. We learn how to, to push those things to the side. We learn how to give up what's good and what's better for what's best. I love this quote by Richard Foster. It's from his book, Celebration of Discipline. Super good book. I would recommend it to all of you. But what he says is, fasting helps us keep our balance in life. How easily we begin to allow non-essentials to take precedence in our lives. How quickly we crave things that we do not need until we are enslaved by them. And so my question for you is, what could you give up to allow yourself to focus more on God? Is there something that you're spending too much time with? Is there something that, that has too much control over your life? Is there something that, that you're just allowing to, to infiltrate your life too much that you could give up in order to help yourself focus more on God? So at the end of this last year, probably about a month ago, I, I spent some time, intentional time, just kind of reflecting over 2023. Um, I went through my camera roll to help me, but I basically wrote down like praises uh, for each month, just reflecting on, on God's faithfulness and what he had done. And I went through each month just to, to reflect and see how God had moved in my last year. And then I spent intentional prayer time praying over 2024. And I, I, I made goals for this year. Uh, they weren't, I wouldn't call them like New Year's resolutions, but they were goals. And one of my goals that I wrote down was regularly fast from my phone one day per week. Okay, that's probably one of the hardest things that I wrote down for my goals. It was to regularly fast from my phone one day per week. And the reason that I did this is because I personally feel like my phone has too much control over my life. It's always with me. It's always in my pocket. I'm checking it constantly. I'm always wondering what's going on, what's on my phone. Sometimes it's hard for me to just be present and have a conversation with someone because I'm always looking at my phone or wondering what's going on. It. I feel like my phone has too much say in my life. It has too much control over what I, what I do. And, and so I made it a goal to fast from it one day every week. Now it's a, a 2024 goal, so haven't necessarily implemented it yet, but I got plenty of time to do it. But what could it be for you? What could that thing be for you? What could you give up to allow yourself to focus more on God? Maybe for you, it is your phone. Maybe you take on that challenge and maybe you don't do it for a whole day, but maybe you do it for a couple hours. Or maybe it's TV for you, or Netflix. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's reading. Maybe it's video games. I don't know what it is. I don't know how you spend your time or what you, you fill your schedule with, but what is something that you could give up in order to focus more on God? And to make it really practical for us, again, last week with solitude, if you remember, I talked about picking a time and a place. Right? If we're gonna spend more time with God, pick a time and a place, schedule that time with God. Hopefully you did that, if not, do it this week, right? That challenge doesn't stop. But I wanted to make it really practical again. Uh, and so this week, here, here's what I came up with. Pick a thing and a length. Okay, I couldn't really come up with a better word for it, but pick a thing and a length. So, so pick something to fast from. I don't, again, I don't know what that is for you. You can talk about that in small groups. And then pick a length. How long are you gonna fast from it? Fast from it, how, what's the, how often? What does that look like for you? Here's the deal though. I would never ask you guys to do something that I'm not also willing to do. Okay, so anytime I get up here and I, I challenge you or I encourage you to do something, I'm also challenging and encouraging myself to do it. I'm in the same boat. I'm never gonna try to get you to do something that I'm also not willing to do myself. So that whole example about the phone thing, I'm writing this message. I'm like, I'm just gonna do it. 
Okay, so this Friday, I'm fasting from my phone for 24 hours. So from the time I go to bed on Thursday night to the time I wake up on sun, or Saturday morning, I'm not gonna have my phone. Okay, it's gonna be completely turned off. I'm not gonna check it, not gonna look at it. You can try to call me or text me. I'm, hopefully I don't pick up. Uh, but that, that's my thing. Okay, my thing is my phone. My length is that, that Friday, that 24-hour period. But what, what is that for you? What is that gonna be for you to put this into action? And here's where it all really boils down. The main idea, the bottom line, if, if you don't remember anything else, I want you to remember this. It's that you gain more than you lose when you fast. You gain more than you lose when you fast. Yes, I, I understand that when you fast, you're giving something up, right? You're denying yourself something. You're saying no to something. You're choosing to remove something or, or go without something in your life for a period of time. But if you do this correctly, then you'll actually gain something so much greater. Because again, the purpose of fasting is to remove something, to, to temporarily eliminate something from your life in order to create the space to have more focused time on God. Fasting creates the opportunity to gain a deeper and a closer and a more intimate relationship with God. I love these words from Philippians 3, verses 7 through 8. Paul says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. There are a lot of things that we can spend our time on and, and fill our lives with. There are a lot of things that we can pursue. There are a lot of things that we can chase after. There are a lot of things that we can try to accomplish. But Paul here, he says that everything else is worthless when compared with knowing Christ Jesus. Pursuing a relationship with Jesus it should be the, the number one priority, the number one goal, mission, and purpose of our entire lives. And sometimes, like I talked about last week, we are distracted, right? And sometimes there are things that we need to eliminate, things that we need to temporarily push to the side, things that we need to prove to ourselves. We don't need that. Fasting, we don't, we don't need food or we don't need social media or we don't need our phone or, or we don't need whatever it is. We need God more than that. And fasting allows us to focus more on God because sometimes we lack the intentionality that we need when it comes to our relationship with God. And one of the best ways that we can work on that is by disciplining ourselves and removing something and then filling that space with God. So here in a minute, we're gonna sing a, a powerful response song. And during that song, I want you to, to sing, I want you to worship, but I really want you to, to prayerfully consider what that thing might be for you. If you take a step this week and, and you try to put this in action by picking a, a thing and a length, I want you to, to really prayerfully consider what that might be for you. What, what can you remove temporarily from your life in order to focus more on God? What is something that you could go without? Something that you would be willing to give up in order to focus more on God.